Throughout human history, humans have engaged in genetic engineering. Early forms involved selective breeding of animals ranging from sheepdogs to Arabian horses. The longhorn cow is a more recent example in which ranchers bred a type of cow which is specially suited for ranching out west. To most of us, these examples seem ordinary and natural. Today, however, adjustments are also being made to crops in order to make them more insect resistant, pesticide resistant, drought resistant, and to enhance other qualities such as taste and texture. Most exciting, however, is the potential to alter the human genetic structure. Already scientists have successfully conducted experiments involving retro-engineered viruses used to cure certain genetic diseases. Genetic engineering allows us not only to adjust our environment, but to dramatically alter ourselves as well. The total potential of this technology is unknown, but the public is very optimistic. Brian, what interests you about genetic engineering? Um, well, I, I think there's several things. I mean, there's I think there's two different types of genetic engineering. You have sort of the plant-based where you're working on agriculture and so forth. And in that, I, th I think the potential to um, generate large crop surpluses, thereby reducing the amount of world hunger, if not solving the problem entirely, uh, presents enormous potential. But then on the uh, more human side of it, that is, you know, the cloning and the use of biotechnology and medical research and so forth, I think the uh, potential in solving a lot of the genetic problems that, that, you know, are at this point irreparable, I think it would be a very beneficial thing to society if we could say stop the uh, gene that causes cancer from developing in a uh, fetus before the baby is even born. What interests you personally about genetic engineering? Um, me personally, I'd have to say the crop research and the, uh, the, the both the, the research of uh, sort of more durable, more um, economically feasible crops is one strong interest, and the other one would be um, the use of plant life and uh, animal, you know, bacteria life in uh, bioremediation. Just the ability of these organic substances to break down toxic pollutants into safe substances, in my opinion, is something very significant that it would be great to look into it further. What would you like to see become more widespread? What would you like to see them focus on? I would like to see a greater acceptance of the idea of genetically altered crops and foods in um, both mainstream American society and well as in a, from a global perspective. I think there's a lot of nations such as India that struggles from um, poverty and uh, poor food production. And you have people like Vandana Shiva who are arguing that the problem is actually the genetically engineered foods, but most of her research is funded by the pesticide agencies. And I think that's a key problem there is they keep relying on these older methods that in a lot of cases are not sustainable and are not um, pr producing enough food. And I think globally I'd like to see more of a acceptance of uh, genetically altered foods. The latest developments in medical technology are quite encouraging. CNN recently reported that Jack and Lisa Nash genetically selected their child, Adam, through in vitro fertilization. This process allowed Adam to not only be without a life-threatening condition known as Fanconi anemia, but also allowed him to help his sister, Molly. Scientists transplanted stem cells from Adam's umbilical cord into his sister. This procedure allowed the transplant to come from a sibling, which almost triples the success rate when compared to that of a stranger. Another advantage to this new technology is that parents with a high probability of having seriously ill children can safely have children without fear for their health. For example, the Nashes have a 25% chance of having a child with Fanconi anemia without these procedures. While some critics have expressed concern about the science, Jeff Kahn, director of the University of Minnesota's Center for Bioethics, explained to CNN that it is widely considered ethical to screen embryos for this genetic disease. As scientists perfect these technologies, they should become more accessible to the public. Scientists optimistically look forward to the opportunity to have a healthier and better society due to this technology. From MSU, this is Adrian Nassar reporting. It's interesting, Matt, but then we would only be portraying the positive aspects of the technology. Yeah, I mean, yeah that's what if, true. What if we did a film and we looked at the dangers of genetic engineering and it would look something like this?
Basic genetic engineering has been used throughout human history. Early forms involve selective breeding of animals ranging from sheepdogs to Arabian horses. The longhorn cow is a more recent example in which ranchers bred a type of cow which is specially suited for ranching out west. To most of us, these examples seem ordinary and reasonable. Troubling, perhaps, are the adjustments being made today to crops that make them more resistant to the elements and to enhance some less than essential qualities such as taste and texture. Separate from other research, however, is the vast and dangerous world of human genetic engineering. The potential to manipulate the human genetic structure offers untold possibilities and enormous risks. Genetic engineering allows us not only to adjust our environment, but to dramatically alter ourselves as well. The boundaries of this technology are unknown, but the public is wary of the possibilities. Brian, what concerns you the most about genetic engineering? Um, I think there's two things that really concern me. With regards to uh, especially the uh, use of genetic engineering in uh, human reproductive cycles, I believe it's the uh, willingness to uh, sacrifice human life merely for, because of the chance of uh, genetic defects occurring in the child later on in life, or even you know the discovery of something like Down syndrome or some sort of other disability. Um, being grounds for terminating the pregnancy, in my opinion, is a legitimate concern with regards to genetic engineering. Okay. Um, what are the abuses that you are aware of with this technology? Um, I'd say the primary abu abuses take place um, within the research into um, reproductive health and uh, just the use of uh, genetic, uh, genetic engineering to test, you know, um, prenatal organisms for defects and also the use of like um, the brain material of aborted fetuses to uh, heal other people's mental disorders I think is a especially if it's an aborted fetus it brings up various ethical issues that pro have not been addressed by the researchers yet and I think they, these things would need to be addressed prior to the use of these sorts of procedures. How would you counsel someone to be careful in genetic engineering? Um, I think I would caution someone to consider the possible ethical ramifications of their research. I mean, in a lot of cases in genetic engineering, there's either beneficial or neutral ethical implications, but in some cases, especially when it involves human beings, there's several ethical implications that I would advise the uh, indi individual to take into consideration before beginning that sort of research. The latest developments in medical technology are quite disturbing. CNN recently reported that a couple genetically selected a child for the express purpose of changing another human's life. Advances in genetic engineering allow this couple, left anonymous for their privacy and safety, to choose their baby boy to have a particular bone marrow which enabled the child to make a transplant to his sister. While this operation may have been life-saving, scientists admit that this solution was by no means the only option for the young girl. Other techniques provide a reasonable success rate. Two especially troubling aspects of this decision are the following. First, the child had no voluntary consent in being used for this procedure. The parents completely deprived the child of standard and accept accepted medical protocols involving consent before being used in this sort of experiment. However, the child was not only given no choice, but his genetic structure was forced upon him so that he could be used for this purpose. This sort of exploitation raises huge difficulties for the use of this technology. Secondly, in order to achieve this life-saving operation, other life was disregarded. The parents implanted an embryo from a number that were created through in vitro fertilization. While the country continues to debate abortion and the life of unborn children, this procedure casts such concerns to the wind and leaves what many would consider to be young children either destroyed or frozen indefinitely. This callous disregard for the consequences of this technology lead many to express concern over genetic engineering. From Michigan State University, this is Dina Galgosi.